What is going on guys, Jim Jam Gamer here and welcome back to another Indie Insight video. Today we're going to be doing some Lionheart, it's a JRPG from a producer called Shishan May, if I pronounced that right, and developer of Fruit Bat Factory. So let's get stuck into this. So straight away I get into the game and I'm like wow, the artwork gets me straight away. It's like a classic you know, JRPG where you get some decent artwork. Some alright dialogue as well. Um, you're a character called Leon, Leon Lionheart. So there's two lions in that name, really. That's what the character in this says, anyway. And then you accompany a guy called Orison, if I'm saying it properly, Orson. Um, and you're in a town and you've got to do this little trial to make sure what your class will become. But it's all predetermined. You don't get to choose, so then you become a warrior slash mage kind of character. But straight away, I'm thinking artwork intense. I like that. Am I being? Am I going to be able to move around though? That's what I was thinking. No, no, you can't move around in this game. So the whole town, everything you see in the background, I can't just get my character Leon and walk around, which is a it's a big shame in my eyes. Then you come into different characters, you get to meet them. Um, this girl, she's Ma Maria Bella, I think that's how I say her name, Maria Bell. <laughs> anyway. You meet the characters quite quickly on in the game and there's a big dialogue on a build up. Um, you get to learn people's personalities and for some reason they expect this girl to be some sort of awkward character. I didn't I didn't adapt that from the dialogue that came out, but the other characters are making it out like she's an awkward person. I didn't see it like that. But um yeah, you do meet other people. You'll meet someone later on that's like a, cl a cleric in the game. This one's a mage. Obviously you got Orson or Arsehole or whatever his name is and he's like the big ox m the muscle of the gang and you're the cocky blonde haired leader Pretty like stereotypically the hero of the game Just to give you a quick look at the world map. This is what it looks like Obviously you just click on a piece of artwork and you click on it. You don't get to walk around It's basically click click and you're in the next in the next zone really so there's no expl exploration aspect of the game which is the downfall in this part, is it's like a tutorial for combat. I'll cover you a little bit here and a little bit on later combat aspects. But this is just the basic of combat. So this is the combat screen. Obviously, you've got the enemy in front of you. There's no animation from the enemy, so he'll be stood there looking at you like a murderous scumbag constantly. There's no movement. Um, we're kind of like tile panels at the bottom. So we're the front line, because so I've got... Because I'm a melee character, obviously, I'm front line. I'll be attacking with the sword, and he'll be attacking with his sword. Very basic fighting here. You've got your HP, which is obviously health points. We all know that. AP is ability points in this game. Um, you have to click engage to go and attack and choose how you'd attack, which more heavier attacks will cost your AP. So let's go and have a look a bit further on now on a proper battle. So in any of the dungeons, you get like this little time, time, uh, how can I put it, time bar? Timeline bar, that's it. Um, you got these little balls here, if you can see them, like golden balls, green balls, chocolate solid balls, blue balls. So all these balls represent different events in the timeline. Um, the one at the end is a boss battle. You've got things like you have to get time to heal up in one of them. There'll be items to be taken in one of them. There'll be enemies to fight. All of them are different keys in, in the timeline. There's different ways to approach through the dungeon you can either go through a normal pace you can do it at a rush pace or you can do it cautious depending on which one you choose and um, between each point it'll increase either your your enemies but you'll get more items on the way or you'll get less items but more enemies and it depends how you want to travel through the dungeons really I, i'm quite impatient so at first i'll start picking up more items and i'm thinking ah oh, fuck this i'm just gonna rush through it so yeah, you get to choose that, but then it affects how much loot you get on between the start and finish of the dungeon. Here we are in a proper battle now. So we've got five enemies in front of us. We've got three in the party and one on the sideline. The sideline party member, they can be switched in with any other party member that you'd see fit to. Um, as you can see, Leon and Orsin are in the front line. Their tiles are a bit forward more to Maribel because she's a mage. Um, the big red circles on Leon and Maribel's um, tiles, they are emblems and they are, the, what I've chosen are fire emblems and that enables me to cast fire magic, the same with Maribel. Orson isn't a spellcaster so he won't be able to do it, um, but that's the basic formations, should I say, of a fight. You'll, the front line of the enemy will fight the front line of your party and the back line of the enemy will fight the back line of your party. 
So if they've got bows, they'll hit the back line rather than hit the front of our line. Um, the only animation in the battle is when a cast a, a, a magic is cast. So there will be no animation for them swinging the sword. Be no other animations of the numbers hitting the screen, and it moves quite quickly. Really, you can get a bit lost. So if you do like a strategical battle, I wouldn't say this is the game for you because all you see is numbers do 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 in in the turn based. There's no actual like right. He's going to hit me here. So what am I going to do for my next turn? There's no thinking process from the start of your turn to your to the end of the turn. You could have lost two guys because this all happened so fast. But yeah, like you see, then I switched out Maria Bell and put Emma. Because she's a healer, so yes, you get people that can heal but can't attack. Then you've just got the ones that can't cast spells but can just attack. And then people obviously that just cast magic. So you've got to be careful where you put them in the formations. But this is the battle screen. Um, there's nothing much, there's nothing great about it. But if you enjoy things like this, it's, it's, it's right down your street. There's not a lot I can say that I really enjoy about the battle. Other than it's turn-based, old school turn-based like. You don't get many of them now. There's a lot of real turn, turn-based battle systems which ain't as attractive as the turn-based ones. So at the end of the battle, you get like your obvious items dropped, gold plus, and then the experiences added on. You can level up. You level up automatically, so your core attributes go up without you choosing what needs to go up. Um, and that's about it, really, on this game. It claims to be an RPG, which I. I disagree with in some aspect. I think it's more of a visual novel RPG. So yeah, you do get to battle, but that's about it. There's no choices to be made. There's no exploration, really. You can't move a character about. There's no, oh, what if I go down this path? Will it change how the game ends? So it's basically like reading a book, but you get to do part of the battle, if that makes sense. But yeah, if you're into visual novels, if you're into RPG, JRPGs mixed in with that, then the game is perfect for you. If this game is down your street, then it's £11.24 currently with a minus 25% offer on, on Steam. When it's full priced, it's £14.99. So it's up to you. I've tried to give you a bit of an insight just to see if you if, if it's the game for you. Um, they class it as an adventure RPG. I think it's more of a visual novel, but if you're into that and if you want a depth of storyline, that looks like there can be romance in the storylines, but however... If you can't make the choices, then what's the whole point in that? So yeah, it's uh, on the Steam store now. Go and get it if you enjoyed. All right, guys, that brings us to our next game of the episode. It's Jotun, or Jotun, I don't know how to pronounce it properly. It's an action-adventure indie game by Thunder Lotus Games. And what this game's about, it's from like a bird's-eye, third-person kind of view. Um, you basically spawn in level. You've just read a bunch of dialogue in the beginning. I think the artwork in, the, in this game's amazing. It's really, it's got a nice feel to it. Um, it's full control supported as well. So if you want to stick a controller in, then go ahead and go and go and enjoy it like that. With games like this, I prefer putting controllers in it. So what what happens in this game is you get some kind of like, I can narrate a talk to you. It sounds like a god maybe or some sort of god, and they're telling you all about the background and what's going on. Um, you're a character looking for this specific place and you've got to progress through levels and then get through the little puzzles to get through the levels it looks pretty good to be honest with you so the specific terrain will have different things to get in your way so in this instance i didn't know what i was doing i was just like right i'm gonna attack everything that moves so these spores they they pump out poison and obviously if you go over to the flowers they'll cure your poison so basically, if you don't want to die because the poison does hurt, try and not get poisoned first and then go to the flowers to cure. The little ghost that I hit then, that, that'll end the level for me. I need to find three on this level and then it'll open a doorway which is in the middle will let me go to a certain place at the end. If you see any of these wells in the game with the guy that looks like he should be in Beavis and Butthead, um, stand on the pad and it'll heal you up. You will need to actually spend the time just to stand on these pads because if you don't heal up and so the bards waiting for you in the next path then you kind of fuck yourself in the ass really so when you find the three spirits on this level this specific level you'll open this doorway to this bloke with an axe um, he's obviously died before and he's been having a, a good sleep behind the rock a um, bit like Jesus and you've got to defeat him basically and what happens is is he'll swing his um, little pike I think it's a pike and every time you hit him he'll expand and his pike will obviously get bigger 
So you've got to kind of roll out the way of that pike before he hits you, because if he does hit you, it's going to hurt you. Anyway, you just keep on doing this same tactic to this boss, and eventually you will kill him. And then we're allowed into the next room. Eventually you come to a place called the Void, and it'll open up a different, like, walkways to different parts of the universe, or worlds as such. I've just walked into this one, and I've just spawned Jab the Hut in tree form. Um, she's got a nice rack, and I do like her chin. And a nice smile, but um, yeah, it's basically like Dark Souls, but an anime third person bird's eye view version of it. Because the boss is quite tricky, to be honest with you. Um, we've already learned what the flowers do in the level, which is uh, what I do like about the game, is that you learn what different items do, and then you use them in the boss battle. So she starts pumping out like some sort of toxin like them other spores did. You've got to race over to the flower, and that's kind of like your safe haven. Uh, she'll open up her belly button, and you've got to slam this flower like you've never slammed a flower in your life before. No pun intended. Um, and then, you've just basically got to rinse, repeat. She'll change her strategy a bit. So you've got to dodge the big butch bitch hands that she's got. Uh, she'll leave a shadow to where she's going to start hitting it. But yeah, this is the part I was on about with the toxin, so I'm going over to the flower... I'll stay here until he healed. It gets a bit harder though because you get these little mini trees that come out the floor and start hitting you. And then you obviously get m the branches, her legs, grow bigger. So you've got to do a big attack to get past them. But if you like these kind of games, the adventure games like this, this is the game for you. I thoroughly enjoyed going through the first couple of hours of this game. I thought the bosses were really like thought out. Um, it took me, I think it was like two goes to actually crack what was going on in this, in this boss fight because I kept on getting bitch slapped by these buff hands uh, and then bitch slapped by these little worms that come out the floor which are trees but yeah you'll learn how the tactics do if you enjoy like figuring out how to battle bosses and if you do enjoy Dark Souls I'm not saying it's Dark Souls don't get me wrong but it's kind of Dark Souls-esque because the bosses are well thought of and you know you're gonna have to use your head in the beginning unless you obviously search Google or whatever so yeah the, it's just a really good game from what I can see so if you do fancy picking up this game, it's currently on Steam at £10.99. Um, I don't know what the currency would be if you're in Europe or any other countries. But it's £10.99 at the moment. There's no discount applied at this moment in time, unfortunately. But for the tenor, if you've got the time to go through it, and if you enjoy these type of games, then I would definitely go for it. I can't really say there's any downfalls as such to this action indie game adventure game because i think it was really thought out of the artwork's really good the animation's really good and yeah overall i, I probably give about a four out of five so far of what i played on it and all the reviews are mostly positive as well last but not least we've come to an early access indie rpg simulator strategy game by hugh millward um it's called war sim um war sim the realm of aslona that's it and basically in this game it's all writing so this game obviously involves you clicking a lot of the keypads to you know progress through the game if anyone's ever played a game like this before yes it's all text based and yes it's all writing and there's no action in that search but you can obviously enjoy the game if you like to spend a lot of time and really think about your choices because this will develop into something new for you every single time if you've just started this game 20 times and changed your choices, you're always going to get a different end product. You can go around dominating different islands or nations. You can take over them. You can change the taxes. You can kick out all the prisoners or execute all the prisoners in your jails. And it all influences how the people see you, how other people see you. You can even invade the royal banks, which is partly yours anyway, and take all the money for yourself. It depends how you want to rule your kingdom. And doing so will change all aspects of this sim massively. Uh, I was reading a few things about it. Apparently, it's got over 40 quadrillion randomly generated faces, so it must be them little faces that they show at the top. Um, it's got generated nations for you to inter interact with. It's got gambling. I've been in the gambling arena. I've lost loads of money trying to fucking bet on people. I think I butch and they get levered. Um, there's just a shit ton of people to hire in this game. If you've got the gold, then you're going to have a fucking killer of an army. 
Um, there's random events that happen all the time. There's millions of factions, and there's a lot in this game. I'm not going to cover it massively in this episode because I haven't really played it in depth to tell you. But if you enjoy these games and you want to make things for yourself and you've got the time to sit down, click some buttons and see where this lands you, then this game is for you. So the game currently sits in the Steam Store. Sits in the see what reading about. The Steam Store for three ninety nine. So it's quite cheap to pick up. Um, if this is what you want to be playing, it's early access, so you're going to get tons and tons of tons and tons of updates, especially with it being text-based. So I'm running out of breath there. And for three ninety nine, you could lose that in a pub or on a on a fruit machine and not give a fuck, or you could spend it on a hooker or. You could buy a pack of Rizzlers with a couple and a pack of fags. Actually, I don't even know if you can buy fags for 3 99 anymore. Yeah, so pick it up, have a, have a little feel with it. Um, but if, you, if you're into this game, I think it'll be a really one for, big one for you. So, yeah, that, that's the end of my episode, guys. That's three indie games that we've covered. We've covered Warsim. We've covered Jotun. I think, I, I think I'm getting that wrong. The Viking. Jotun the Viking. And then, obviously, we've done Lionheart in the beginning. If you enjoyed this video, can you please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. I'll be doing a few more of these three games per episode videos just to keep you up to date with the new indie games that are coming in. So yeah, like and subscribe. Peace out.